game like that where things are a little rusty offensively, how important was it to play with that defensive effort and maintain that effort from start to finish? Yeah, it, it was important. I, I was a little worried about that, um, you know, not only the week off, but the 11 a.m. start. And, you know, we haven't had one of these in, in a while. I think we've got another one, Michigan's 12 Eastern, 11 uh, Central. So uh, it was, the, the defensive effort was exactly where it needed to be. I didn't think our force on our cuts, uh, especially against their pressure, is, is, is where we, uh, we needed it. But, you know, when we uh, – it shows what we're capable of on the defensive end when the ball's not going in the hoop. It keeps you in the game. And we've had a couple where our off, lack of offense has affected our defense. Tonight we really grinded out stops. And what was it, 28 to 22 at halftime? I thought Jamarcus gave us a nice spark. I thought he gave us a couple good uh, pace plays, transition plays, got a few layups uh, when the ball wasn't going in. Uh, but I just didn't like the force we were playing with offensively. Second half, we got it going a little bit. We did a better job in the paint in the second half. Our shots still didn't fall. 4 21 from three and winning a game by 19 is a great sign for this team. And, you know, as we talked about in the locker room, now can we carry this uh, same effort on the road? And, you know, this is a tough team. The, when you look at Penn State's last five, they get three wins all by double digits, two of those on the road by 15. Uh, one point game with under two to go at Northwestern and then played Michigan State to a single digit game in their last one. So this is a team that's playing their best basketball of the season. So for us to come out and uh, take care of business, <clears throat> excuse me, like we did was, um, is a great sign. Now we got to get back to work and get ready for Wednesday. Back to Jim Marcus, um, how have you seen him grow into this new role, um, especially with what he did today? Yeah, he, you know what, he's, I think, like the, the new rhythm that he has. He can be a change of pace guy off the bench. And that's exactly what he showed tonight, getting the ball down the floor. <clears throat> you know, that press, they can't press you if you get it up past the, the trap. And I thought Jamarcus did a nice job, <clears throat> excuse me, of that in the first half. And again, got us a couple layups. He took a couple quick ones, I thought, in the second. We talked about time and score. Uh, he made one, but you know, just getting us down, getting us into an offense, getting us set. And he's, uh, he's done a nice job. Bryce, I've, even though he didn't have a great offensive game, uh, he did a phenomenal job on Ace Baldwin. He is really, really good, tough to guard. Did the same thing against um, Boo Booey in our building. Uh, didn't do quite as good a job on Boo Booey in <laughs> Chicago, but you know he's he's really taken pride not only initiating our offense but guarding the point guard, and uh, that's not easy to do, especially at six seven with Bryce's size. But it shows the versatility he has on that end. And then we had some lineups where we were switching one through five. Um, but, you know, I like the way that Bryce and Jamarcus are playing. Uh, it's a different element out there. They both uh, bring different bring different things. But the important thing tonight is both of them are terrific on the defensive end. What challenges does Penn State's pressure create and what adjustments did you make to that? Yeah, a lot. I mean, they, they're forcing 16 turnovers per game. I think they're 12th in the country in turnover percentage. And it was the number one thing. I mean, believe me, we worked uh, as much press offense you know, with all the prep time we had. We didn't have as much against Maryland. You know, they're the other team that really gets after you in the full court. We didn't handle that very well. Uh, we had 13 turnovers, but uh, I think only a couple of them were due to the press. They are so good. Their activity, their hands, Ace Baldwin, if you bring the ball near him, he's getting it. Uh, we had a good high-low flash. Ace Baldwin got it low. You know, Joe didn't keep the ball high. But uh, overall, I thought we did a nice job of keeping our spacing and then attacking. Casey hit a huge three. They cut it to 12. Kese hits the three, put us up 15, and then Rink gets the little layup, a uh, little jump hook to put us back up 17. So I thought we uh, we did handle their pressure well, even though I think we had 13. They they forced 16 a game, and um, you know we had a couple car first half we spun in a crowd. That's you know, that's an automatic turnover against this team. We were better at that in the second half. On the glass, you guys half time when you know six point game. You well, that, that was the message is, you know, it's, these first five minutes are, are huge. They're important. We talked about getting some flow and pace into our offense. We, you know, we've been a pretty darn good offensive team this year. And again, they, they force you to play different than pretty much anybody else because of your alignment against the press. You're not in the same spots that you're normally in. Uh, but I thought we did a really good job getting it into the paint in the second half. We outscored them. 36 to 18. Thanks, Seamus. I put my glasses on. <laughs> um, but yeah, 36 to 18 in the paint. And I thought second half we established that uh, pretty early. And then, you know, Casey hit a nice one. We had a couple good looks as well, I thought. Uh, but they force you to play a, a different game than you're used to. 
and that affected us early. But again, we kept defending, and that's important. When you're going through tough stretches, your defense is going to keep you in those ugly games when it's not going in the basket. You guys were plus 11 on the boards, but it seemed like it was a total team effort, just looking at the rebounding numbers. How, how much of an emphasis was that, especially against them, considering how much they've struggled? Yeah, it, it, it was a huge emphasis, and it was the same. I thought Josiah was the guy that really set the tone for us on the glass against Michigan last week, and I thought Juwan was the guy tonight that was getting 50-50 balls and going after him. I thought Sam uh, got in there and mixed it up. Uh, on the glass, he got a couple good offensive rebounds as well. And yeah, I, I think everybody that played in the first half had a rebound, and we don't have that happen very often. So, uh, really pleased to see us win. When we when they battle the boards by double digits, we're generally generally in pretty good shape. They're uh, defensively, they're over commitment at times. You guys had some free cutters and backdoor stuff. Is that something you planned on, or is that yeah, just yeah? I mean, we worked on our our, our back cut package and uh, Casey got a couple of them in there they called fouls before he got the shot up but you know I it got us into the bonus uh, pretty quickly in uh, in the first half but yeah that was that was a big thing you know they're gonna pressure uh, you know they're gonna uh, swipe at everything and, and give them credit Mike's done a really nice job of getting these guys uh, to compete at a really high level that team plays extremely hard so you know a good good win for us in an early one especially when the, when the ball wasn't falling when you get into low offense Yeah, he uh, only had one. It felt like he had more assists than that tonight. But he, he just he, he's a, such a calming influence for us. When you get the ball in his hands, you feel pretty good. When you, you got cutting and movement going on, and that that's what our guys I thought did a good job of was the cutting and the movement where it wasn't as forceful as it needed to be in the first 20 minutes. But yeah, when Rink has the ball, and you know I thought he did a better job pump faking uh, when he got the ball in the paint as well, where they blocked four of our shots in the first half. And uh, yeah, Rink's. He's been phenomenal, and you can tell he's really picked up on the nuances of the system as the year has gone on. And uh, you know, it's not very often when you have a big guy leading an assist. We had it last year with Derek, uh, and Rink is is leading us this year. So I've, I'm really proud of him for you know continuing to go out there and make uh, winning plays uh, for our team on, on that end. Anything else, for Coach? Sam Grayson and Lars McGowan's here this week today. What does that do? Yeah, I mean, you know, to start with Bryce, he, he can go anywhere in the world on All-Star break. I mean, that's a precious, precious time. And um, I didn't go back to Iowa State. I went to Cabo San Lucas <laughs> when I was in the same position. So it, it tells a lot, you know, first of all, about Bryce. I think what he thinks of this place, how he was treated here. And, you know, he comes back and works out in, in our gym, which is awesome uh, to see him in there. Uh, you know, still keeps in communication with our guys, and uh, it was great to have him back in the building. I think Trey came last year with him when we beat Maryland over All-Star break, and then Sam uh, is, is on a little break right now as well, and you know, it's just awesome to see a guy, I think, that really kind of flipped things for us. When you look at culture, Sam Greasel, Emmanuel Bandemel, Derek Walker, I think are three guys that are really responsible for getting our, you know, the narrative of Nebraska basketball flipped. So, you know, seeing Sam back here, I know, I think he surprised his mom, which, you know, I can only imagine how that reunion uh, was when, when he saw her. But, yeah, it was great to have both those guys in the building. He said his dad cried, not his mom. Really? So. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs>